So where can I attach my monitors to my patient? The first accessory we're going to deal with is the capnograph. So how do you attach the capnograph to your patient? As you can see in the yellow circle, a endotracheal tube is inside your patient. The breathing tubes are hooked up to the anesthetic machine and the breathing tubes plug right into the endotracheal tube. A capnograph can only be attached one way, in between the breathing tube and the endotracheal tube. The wider end is over the endotracheal tube and the narrower end is into the breathing tubes. The clear part that you see in this mainstream capnograph is a wearable item. In other words, it's meant to be replaced on a regular basis. If your readings begin to become wonky or there are cracks in it, it's definitely time to replace it. There are different colored pieces meant for different size patients. Usually you're going to see an adult and a pediatric size. We just finished reviewing a mainstream capnograph attachment. This is a side stream capnograph. As you can see, this is a smaller, lighter attachment. There are other differences that we'll discuss in a later lesson. The side stream only fits one direction, same as the mainstream we just saw. The tubing is longer for adults and shorter for pediatric patients. In the case of the side stream, this clear tubing is meant to be replaced. If the line becomes clogged, usually from condensation, this is an obvious time to replace it. The second accessory that we're going to look at is the pulse oximeter. Pulse oximeters look like a clip. One side has a light and one side has a receiver. The light should be directed away from the fluorescent lights. Dark pigment interferes with the receiver's ability to see the light. Tongues and prep use or vulva are the best areas to obtain readings. Ear pinna and toes are the next best area. Lips across tiny limbs, even loose skin on the side of the thorax can be tried if other areas don't work. The next accessory is the electrocardiogram, commonly referred to as EKG or ECG. There are many little sayings to help you remember where to place the leads. Newspaper, Christmas, smoke up a fire, grass and snow on the ground. Usually the leads have their placement written on the cord somewhere. Besides placement, you will want to make sure that the limbs are even with each other. Right side down is usually best, but this might not be an option if you're watching a dog's bay. When clipping or attaching the alligator clips to the limbs, place the leads just above or below the joints, i.e. the elbow and the knees. When joints are bent, they don't have a lot of circulation. Leads can be placed closer to the carpus and tarsus but you may see more interference there. Thin skin patients might need a gauze square placed between the skin and the clip. Alcohol works best as a conductor liquid, but there are conductive gels that don't evaporate as fast. Be sure to clean the gel thoroughly as it can break down the coils inside the alligator clips. The next accessory is the temperature probe. Temperature probes are placed either in the esophagus or the rectum. It is important to clean them well or invest in two, one for the esophagus and one for the rectum. After all, it just doesn't sound safe to use them interchangeably. The fifth and last accessory that we're going to discuss is the non-invasive blood pressure. Non-invasive blood pressures are measured with the cuff fitted to the patient's limb. As you can see from the left side of the screen, there are two ways to measure the correct size. Either way, a dog's cuff is 40% of the circumference of the limb and the cat's is 30%. The oscilloscopic monitors inflate and deflate the cuff as it, as it calculates the blood pressures. We just reviewed the oscilloscopic blood pressure accessory. A Doppler blood pressure also uses a cuff like the oscilloscopic accessory. The cuff is measured the same way, but instead of attaching the cuff to a machine, the cuff is attached to a sphygmomometer. You will inflate and deflate the cuff while looking at the sphygmomometer to determine the blood pressure. The blood pressure cuff is placed proximal to a crystal. The Doppler has a crystal that amplifies the sound of the blood as it flows over it. This crystal is placed curved side over the pulse of the lower limb. The fur must be clipped from the area 
and gel must be used. Vet wrap is used to secure the crystal to the limb. Sadly, we have not developed our technology into the level of Star Trek. During surgery, our patients will have wires here and there. Hook your patient up after they've been secured into position for the procedure. Wires can be directed out of the surgical site. Some accessories can be attached in different locations. Many of the parameters require good circulation and hydrated tissue. Remember, there will be tie downs and an IV catheter on a limb. Small twisted legs found on doxies and bullies might interfere with accurate placement of cuffs. Dark pigments hinder pulse ox readings. There are equipment failures like kinks and tubing, drying of alcohol, improperly sized cuffs, tongues that have become pinched too long that will cause poor to no readings on your paint machines. Remember, if things don't look right, check your pet, then check your attachments. You will learn more about how to interpret these readings in future classes. But for now, we've concluded how to hook your patients up to the different monitoring devices.